thank you for tuning in. This is a preview and walkthrough of our ACL paper from text to talk with equal contributions by myself, Mark Diggemans is my name, and my co-author Andreas Liesenfeld. The paper itself is openly available and we hope you'll check it out to get the full story. We live in interesting times. Current language and speech technologies are making big strides, but they're also running into big challenges. For instance, voice user interfaces are increasingly ubiquitous, but they have narrow use cases and are often perceived as stilted. As Kopp and Kramer write, so far no system is able to lead a half-decent conversation with a human. Meanwhile, text-based language models have many NLP applications, but are still of limited relevance for human interaction. And this is in large part because they are trained on form alone and text alone at that. And then third, cross-linguistic and uh, cross-linguistic data and cross-linguistic perspectives are in short supply. This has consequences for the reach and relevance of language technologies, but also for the, their vitality and utility. We think of our paper as sitting right at the intersection of these challenges. And we think they represent opportunities. One reason for our measured optimism is that there is now more data from a wider range of languages than has been long assumed. We're talking a quite specific type of data, talk, shorthand for informal, everyday, co-present conversation. One contribution of, his, of our paper is to show that such data is now available for a highly diverse set of languages, many of them not the usual suspects of NLP research. We argue that these kinds of corpora and the linguistic and cultural diversity that they embody represent an untapped resource for language and speech technologies. If you want to understand the basics of human interactional infrastructure, this is where you need to look. If you're interested in seeing truly open domain conversation, this is where you find it. This is the natural ecology of human language. Now, of course, this kind of data also comes with challenges. It requires careful curation and unification, and engaging with it requires bringing together insights from a wide range of disparate fields dialogue modeling, interaction design, NLP, conversation analysis, linguistic typology. Our paper builds on these fields and more. Now, we argue for a move from text to talk. So let's start by explaining this distinction in a little more detail. Text is arguably the strong point of most NLP systems today. It is typically atemporal, it is typically depersonalized, it's easily concatenated, and it's essentially monologic. It yields to our tokenizers, taggers, and transformers quite nicely. Talk, on the other hand, is time-bound. It is participatory. Utterances produced by people in interaction are contingent on one another. This makes talk deeply dialogical with contributions responding to prior ones and shaping the space for next ones. We can illustrate this by looking at phrases most typical of text versus talk in English and in the European language. The words most indicative of talk here in the upper left are also functionally important to interaction. They are the kinds of interjections like mm -hmm and um and ha huh that are meta-communicative devices. These are the little words that help to streamline conversation, to coordinate action, and to build incremental understanding. Yet, speech recognition tends to miss them, and social robots stumble over them. Let's stick with this temporal aspect uh, of talk uh, for a minute. Utterances are ephemeral, and they follow each other in rapid succession. The mean duration of an utterance is less than two seconds. The mean duration of the pause between your utterances and mine is less than 200 milliseconds. That is less than the blink of an eye. And that's good evidence that we work hard to keep this gap as tiny as possible. Here is the distribution of turn transition times in a typical corpus of informal interaction in Dutch. 
The mode here is exactly that kind of small gap between zero and 200 milliseconds. Equally important, overlap of turns is really quite common. Now, one key point of our paper is that you should never assume that one language can speak for all. So let's have a look at the timing of turn taking in a bunch more languages. We find roughly the same picture in 24 languages, 12 unrelated families around the world. Everywhere, turn taking is rapid and concurrent. This means that incremental processing and parallel processing are required. Now note, by the way, that sheer speed doesn't exclude the possibility of subtle variation or differences in calibration. In fact, people can be quite sensitive to these kinds of sub-second differences in timing. And an important part of the work of making voice user interfaces more natural and fluid will be to take this into account. That's where diverse conversational corpora offer crucial empirical evidence. But the biggest point perhaps is that nearly half of all turns arrive in slight overlap with the prior term. This is one reason that walkie-talkie mode, or endpointing, won't work. Um, it's worth stressing this. Gaps are only slightly more common than overlaps in everyday conversation in languages around the world. And this is not a bug, it's a feature. We can come in early to do a collaborative completion to show that we've got the point, or to voice disagreement, all of them perfectly meaningful and efficient uses of language in interaction. Too many current NLP solutions, on the other hand, try to avoid overlap. They don't design for it. They can't really handle it. But the question is, if we don't gracefully handle overlaps, are we even doing human interaction at all? Now, some types of turns seem more prone to overlap than others. Indeed, sometimes the point of an overlapping mm -hmm might be precisely to signal the expectation that the other can go on talking. This brings us to another domain that we study in our paper, feedback. Part of what makes a story a story is that there's an active listener dutifully producing response tokens like mm -hmm, yeah, okay, and so on. And indeed, this is one of the most frequent responsive behaviors in interaction. Across diverse languages, we can find stretches of conversation much like this, where the contributions are skewed towards one person, with one of them doing most of the talking, while the other supports this with short and stereotyped responses. The green circles here represent the most common response tokens in each of the language, which is mm -hmm in English and mm in Korean. So response tokens are ubiquitous. And better yet, this has the looks of a potential universal of infra interactional infrastructure, which is good news if you care about detecting chit chat or if you want to model a common form of open domain conversation. However, here too, there is reason to take linguistic diversity seriously. Eyeballing these four fragments, you might already feel that there might be a frequency difference. Um, and this is indeed supported by the distributional evidence for 100 random samples in each of these corpora. It seems clear then that the occurrence and the frequency of response tokens is not uniform. It may vary by activity, it may vary by speaker, by situation, by setting, even perhaps by language. For the two corpora that we contrast here, continuers occur t about twice as frequently in Korean as in English, and they also occur more often in overlap with an ongoing turn. Now, one implication here is that language technology needs diversity-aware design. Depending on the setting, the speaker, the activity, perhaps the language, a conversational agent might have to issue fewer or more displays of recipiency and should be prepared to deal with incoming response tokens at a lower or higher pace. Perhaps we should reiterate why we think response tokens matter. After all, in much of linguistics and NLP, they are seen as disposable, grunts or stop words to be removed and discounted. Any close look at how these items are actually deployed in interaction shows that it might be just the other way around. These items are public displays of understanding that support joint action coordination. 
their sophisticated form of meta-communication. And they stand, of course, for a larger class of interactional tools, devices that help streamline conversation at every turn. In a very real sense, then, these kinds of items are the original human language technology. Ubiquitous, freely available, rapidly deployable, they are the tools that make or break human interaction. We've taken you through a very selective tour of our paper. We started by positioning it in relation to a number of big challenges for language technologies, and we end with a number of constructive solutions and ways forward. The first is to aim for ecological validity. Talk, not text, represents the primary ecology of human language. If there's anything that can bring us closer to an understanding of how language supports fluid and flexible coordination, it is talk. The second is to represent interactional infrastructure. Text is easily concatenated, flattened, placed out of time. Indeed, that is its chief attraction. But if we do that with talk, we'd be squeezing out the very things that make it work. Turn-taking, timing, response tokens, these are just some of the things that we need to take into account, which means they need to be represented in our data formats, in our models, in our theories. Third, we should design for diversity. There's no need to limit ourselves to the resourceful few. Indeed, it's a good idea to anticipate a combination of linguistic universals as well as language-specific design principles for interaction. Ultimately, we hope our paper helps contribute to a pivot from text to talk. This is crucial for a stronger foundational understanding of the infrastructure for human interaction, but also to ensure that we can build the human and diversity-aware language technologies of the future. Thank you again for tuning in, and please do check out the full paper.